Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning back in with us. We are St. Andrew United Methodist, and we're glad that you could be a part of our virtual worship experience. John 16, 20 through 22 says, Truly, truly, I say to you that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned into joy. Whenever a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that the child has been born into the world. Therefore, you too have grief now, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. Today, our worship theme is all about joy, and we have such a joy, the joy of the Spirit in us, right? God's perfect joy that happiness. Today is also Mother's Day, so we just want to give a shout out to all the mothers out there. We're so thankful for you. Mother's Day is a day to celebrate all women who have mothered us. Unconditional love, unstoppable love, faithful and ferocious love. Wherever that love comes from and from whomever it's bestowed upon in regard to our mothers, we're thankful for that and it's worthy of celebrating. And so this morning, we lift up the name of Jesus as he has given us our mothers, he has given us this joy in our hearts, and we, we sing about his beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is.
of their presence in our lives. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Mother's Day looks a lot different this year. <sighs> Mommy needs a quarantine. And our moms may be spending a lot of time with their kids right now. A lot. Like, so, so much time. And even though they love their kids to the moon and back, Mommy, where are you going? sometimes moms need a little alone time. Mommy! You know, to recharge. Go talk to Daddy. Mommy! Where are you? But no matter what's happening in the world, their favorite way to spend time is with their family. In good times, in hard times. Mom! Hi. You're breaking everything! In uncertain times. Thank you, Mom, for making time for us every single day. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I ask that you would watch over us as we go to bed and rest, that you'd speak to us in Bible stories and speak to us in... Uh... Welcome back as we continue with this post-Easter worship theme overcomers, living our full life in Christ. We have great opportunity to live into the faith, hope, and love that comes with knowing that Jesus is alive and extends to us new life. This kind of life that in its fullness doesn't let any of the challenges or trials of the day detract from our joy and fulfillment in Christ. Our scripture comes from the first chapter of James this week, verses two through four. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance and let endurance have its full effect that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. You know, there was a recent study in manufacturing operations and workplace safety. I know, I know, how could this possibly be an interesting illustration? Let me continue. When it comes to the most hazardous jobs in the world, it turns out this study showed that on-the-job training is far more effective in helping folks learn about and demonstrate safety on the job, much more so than safer teaching techniques like lectures and booklets and videos and classroom instruction. The primary uh, psychology behind this is something called the dread factor. Uh, this, coined, this term was coined by um, one of the authors of the study, Michael Burke, a PhD from Tulane University. The dread factor. In a more interactive training program, he says, the trainees are faced with more acutely the possible dangers of the job. And they are, in turn, more motivated to learn about the dangers and how to avoid them. 
you know, in every generation, being a Christian has the potential to be a hazardous job. There are, are and always have been dangers of all sorts associated with following Jesus. The big one, of course, has been persecution, right? When the prevailing culture and authority actually causes you harm based on your faith. We've read in history about Romans feeding Christians to the lions. But all throughout history, and even in our day, there are still places in the world where you can be killed or jailed for being a Christian. Typically, uh, here in the U.S., Christians don't face that kind of persecution. But there are trials nonetheless. Rejection and marginalization, right? When the prevailing culture and authority doesn't really want to accommodate your faith. More secularized, less observance of holidays and traditions, more criticism of faith perspectives. There's also opposition, right? When the prevailing culture and authority punishes folks for furthering the causes of their faith or acting in ways that are uh, in adherence to their faith. And then there are personal ones that we, uh, trials that we endure all the time, right? Temptations and personal struggles and the ever-present sacrifice, giving up things that are desirable or that we want because they're contrary to God's will and God's way. There are many scriptures in the Old and New Testament that talk about how we respond to trials in our faith. And you know, it could be summed up really in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. Endure trials for the sake of discipline. Learn from them. Nobody goes out looking for trials and suffering. Nobody wants them. But James, in our scripture today, proclaims that a faithful follower of Jesus won't avoid them. Rather, a faithful follower of Jesus will use all the trials that they experience as a means not to just cultivate a character of hope. If you remember, we discussed hope last week in suffering. Not just to cultivate a character of hope, but also to actually grow stronger and more mature in living out our faith. This is what James proposes for us. This is the Christian version of on-the-job training. And there's a measure of dread factor, right? Because it's real life and real life consequences. James says, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And the joy here is not in the trial itself, or the suffering or, or the hardship that it brings. The joy is the growing stronger, the enduring and emerging victorious, the learning of a valuable lesson in capturing the truth more closely, experiencing faith more deeply and transformatively. The joy is in experiencing the victory that Jesus promises. You know, for many years I've been a marathon runner, and it's an experience that's actually helped me make sense of verses like this one. You know, contrary to what you might expect, the hardest run in the quest for finishing a marathon is not the marathon itself. It's that series of runs that occurs in the final weeks in preparation for the marathon. These long training runs. There's no starting line, there's no spectators cheering, there's no finish line celebration. It's just long, lonely, depleting exertion, mile after mile after mile. But it's just those long, depleting, exerting training runs. That trial, that test, that creates the maturity and the endurance to run the race and finish. James says this in our scripture for today. 
let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete and lacking in nothing. Our faith life can be seen in similar terms. In fact, Paul in 1 Corinthians actually compares it to athletic endeavors and running a race from chapter 9. Do you not know that in a race, the runners all compete, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Athletes exercise self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. So I do not run aimlessly, nor do I box as though beating the air, but I punish my body and enslave it, so that after proclaiming to others, I myself should not be disqualified. Trials give us the opportunity to reach the limits that we think we have. And when we get to our very limit, we realize that in Christ, we can go much further. We can mature much more. And we can experience that joy of victory as we overcome the trials and tests and challenges that are daily presented to us. And so, brothers and sisters, these are challenging days. With trials both external to us and the world around us, and internal to us as we navigate our fear or shortcomings or weaknesses or the limitations that we think that we have. Some of us have been impacted pretty hard by the pandemic or by the economic downturn, by the isolation, any one of a number of things. Our faith can be severely tested. Our hope can be severely tested. Our joy certainly can be severely tested. But in this time, these words that we hear from James are certainly words to live by, words to give us encouragement. It's on the job training for faithful Christian living. As we meet and exceed the limits of what we think we can do, we see that in fact that we have in us an irrepressible joy. We're promised to find endurance and maturity and victory. Think for a moment about your greatest accomplishment to date in your life. Whatever you think has been the greatest accomplishment that you've achieved, think about that for a moment. Was it easy? Was it real quick? Was the success right away without any sacrifice or challenge? Probably not. Most of us our greatest accomplishments, what we would say are the things that we are most joyful about in our lives, have been things that have come through long trials and tests, through consistent work and growing and maturing. The scripture this morning reminds us that our daily faith journey is that very same dynamic at work. That as we face the tests and the trials, just in the world around us, we see at work in us a victory that comes from Christ and a promise that that victory is enduring. And in that we have joy. I'll close with these words from James, uh, just a few verses later than what we read this morning, from verse 12. Blessed is anyone who endures trials and temptations. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life.
that the Lord has promised to those who love. As the church, every day is a good day to think about the goodness of God, to have the joy in our hearts no matter what's going on. And so with that, we sing, you are good, you are good, when there's nothing good in me.
has taught me of God's tender care and turned my eyes above. I'll bless her all my days for all her gentle ways. Oh, how I thank my Lord above for my mother's gentle love. Mother's gentle love.